thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Paul Rebner. Thank you very much to the conference organisers and Willem in particular for inviting me to um, talk today and also for um, organising the performance engineering track. So this is actually the second performance engineering track held at an Apache event. The first one was held last year in New Orleans. Uh, and this, uh, this one is the second one that we've had in the Community of Code event. And there's a third one coming up to in Halifax in a few months' time, which I'm also running that track as well on performance engineering. So I think it's, it's been very exciting introducing performance engineering into um, the conference because it covers a lot of different topics and, and covers multiple uh, Apache projects, so lots of people can get involved and there can be quite a lot learnt across the different um, um, projects and across different types of technologies. So, I'm excited to be here today and give this talk. Um, hopefully people know the movie Fast and Furious. I was hoping that was a movie that is familiar to you in China, and I've borrowed some images and concepts on that to try and explain what can be some quite complicated performance topics a bit better. So fast open source software is a bit like doing some street racing, perhaps. Uh, and you need some of the race, so you need some appropriate technology. And I'm talking primarily about big data technologies, for example, uh, and in particular Apache Kafka. And you also need cloud infrastructure. Uh, so cars run on roads and software uh, runs on hardware. So you need the right hardware, the right scale of hardware as well. The talk is primarily focused on the software uh, for this talk. Uh, and you want to be able to do this without some fury, without too many problems in other words. So I'm going to talk today about four example furies or problems that I have come across uh, in the last six or so years building complex Kafka applications. So the first fury is if you have too many Kafka topics. The second one is if you have slow consumers. The third one is if you have too many Kafka petitions. And the fourth one is if you are limited with a single threaded consumer. So just a bit about the company I work for, Instacluster. We have a managed cloud platform for big data and open source technologies. We've got technologies for storage, analysis, search, orchestration, and the one I'm focusing on today is streaming with Kafka. Ah, what is Kafka? Kafka is a distributed streams processing system. It allows distributed producers to send messages to distributed consumers via a Kafka cluster, which is itself a distributed system. So petitions are an essential concept in Kafka. Petitions enable concurrency at the cluster level and First case in, at the producer side, so producers write messages to um, topics running on the Kafka cluster. Concurrency is enabled because the topics are actually broken up into multiple petitions which are spread across all of the rows in the cluster. So that gives you concurrency on the producer side. And uh, another important aspect is the concurrency on the consumer side. So for Kafka read scalability, multiple messages can be read concurrently from leaders and actually now followers uh, of petitions and brokers as well. So you can get extreme concurrency out of the Kafka cluster. Uh, at a high level, petitions enable consumers to share work within a consumer group. And this is a bit like, say, the Amish barn raising, where you get lots of people to help put up the barn very quickly. So consumers share work group, and multiple groups enable message broadcasting, so this is where messages are duplicated across groups, um, each consumer group receives a copy of each message. So, the first fury, fury one, too many Kafka topics. So, over the last six years I've built quite a few demonstration applications using Kafka and other technologies. The first one I built was a logistics IoT application, so this was an application that simulated the movement of goods uh, between warehouses and uh, using trucks to move them around. And there was a lot going on here, a lot, a lot of different types of goods, and you needed to do real-time checking of lots of rules associated with the transportation of these goods. 
goods and the storage of goods in warehouses. So I had two design choices when I built this application. The first one was having many or hundreds of topics. Um, so essentially I, I tried having one topic for each location, for every warehouse in the system, for every truck in the system. Um, so each location uh, was a topic list and multiple consumer groups were subscribed to those topics so that each of the goods in, in a particular location could receive the relevant events to that location. So many topics and many consumer groups per topic resulted in a very high fan out for that system. The second design choice was a lot simpler. Uh, it was one topic for all locations, and then instead of having multiple consumer groups, I actually used an external notification mechanism to do the event broadcasting to send the events to the correct objects that, that needed to receive them. So we try and work better from a performance perspective. Well, interestingly enough, the single topic, single consumer group design wins by a significant factor. Of, uh, it's 155 times better throughput uh, than the original choice, which involved many topics and many consumer groups. So it's quite a big difference, but why such a big difference? Well, going back to my transportation metaphor, it turns out that things like trains are a lot more scalable than cars. You can put a lot more people onto it a single train and move them around quickly. And also the problem of high fan out, uh, it's a bit like a complex road system such as this one where there's lots of on and off ramps. Um, high fan out basically means there's lots of output data coming out of the cluster and many consumer groups uh, which are fairly resource intensive on the cluster as well. Uh, and having many topics is a bit like a New York traffic jam. Um, the more topics you have, the more petitions you need into a Kafka cluster as well, which has a significant overhead, as we'll discover shortly. Um, but, in theory, Kafka is still scalable. You can just make the clusters bigger. So, there's two options for Kafka scalability. One is vertical scale-up, uh, where you just increase the node sizes, which is a bit like adding more lanes to your highway system. And the second one, which is the more common approach, is horizontal scalability, where you scale out the cluster by adding more nodes, which is a bit like adding more roads to your transportation system. Okay, so the second theory is slow consumers. So this was um, what I discovered when I built probably my second Kafka application. It was an anomaly detector system using both Kafka and Cassandra in conjunction with Kubernetes to handle the resourcing of the, the client application code. Uh, so it was a massively scalable anomaly detector. I, I talked about this at Apache Con in Berlin in 2019, the first time. Um, there's multiple systems involved, but basically the load comes in on the left-hand side there. It's generated um, by Kafka producers. Uh, there's a whole bunch of Kafka um, consumers running on Kubernetes to make them scalable, which interact with the Cassandra database to store events and retrieve them to get the historic data you need for doing anomaly detection. So initially I just uh, did something really simple. I just increased the hardware resources. So it was pretty easy to do that, particularly with um, Kafka and Cassandra. You just add, add more nodes, and with Kubernetes, you just add more resources as well. So it was very easy to create lots of consumers create hundreds of consumers very quickly. And initially I started out with a very simple design, which was a single threaded Kafka consumer. So that I didn't have any thread pools in the first design. Uh, but the scalability wasn't particularly good. Um, so in some sense the scalability of the hardware it was too easy to scale the hardware, but the software didn't actually scale in sync with the hardware. So as I increased the number of cores in the total system close to 600, the scalability only went up from 2 billion anomaly checks a day up to about 7.5 billion anomaly checks a day. So that's not, not a particularly linear um, scale going on there. <coughs> so it turned out the problem was the slow Kafka consumers problem. So the default Kafka consumers are only single threaded. Uh, if the processing in each thread is slow, then queuing occurs as the thread is blocked, reducing the throughput. Uh, solutions include um, to speed up the processing to make it faster, or to increase the number of consumers, which is the typical approach. But 
the more consumers you have, the more petitions you need as well, as each consumer needs one or more petitions. Uh, single threaded Kafka consumers and slow processing basically means slow consumers. Um, so yeah, slow consumers mean you need uh, more petitions for higher throughput, but uh, more consumers is actually slow, so try speeding them up. Um, so we need some sort of modifications, some car mods or hacks to try and speed things up at this point. Um, so the approach I used was to introduce multiple threads into the Kafka consumers. So I actually used two um, thread pools, which is a bit like our famous Bondi Ocean pool in Australia, which actually has two pools. Uh, so I did some tuning. I optimized the consumer to try and speed things up and increase the concurrency using this two-stage pipeline in this diagram here. Um, so first of all, I sped up the Kafka polling by having that in a dedicated thread pool, thread pool one, and then I maximized the anomaly detected concurrency by giving that a separate thread pool zone as well. So what was the result? Um, it reduces the number of consumers and therefore the number of petitions needed and gives a higher throughput. But why? Don't more petitions give higher throughput in general in Kafka? Well, we'll find out in a minute. Uh, here was the result of that tuning experiment. This is scalability post-tuning. Uh, it did increase the scalability and the throughput significantly from 7.5 to 19 billion anomaly checks a day, which is 2.5 times um, the, the pre-optimized approach. So we got um, far more um, value from the same number of cores and clusters that, that we had purely through tuning the software and improving the concurrency and the Kafka consumer side of things. So, the third fury is too many petitions. What's really going on under the Kafka bonnet? I might be stretching my car metaphor a bit here, but essentially, you, you can sort of get the idea that the more petitions you have, uh, is similar to car pistons or cylinders, which in a traditional um, petrol engine is, gives you the extra horsepower, basically. So, but how many petitions is too many for petitions? Well, there's a one-piston car, which is a very strange concept. This was called the bubble car. Single cylinder, 10 horsepower, with top speed of 55 miles an hour, which apparently took a long time to get to that speed. On the other hand, 16 pistons is a lot for the car. This was a Cadillac V16, 175 horsepower, top speed of 100 miles an hour, made, I think, in around about the 1940s. So that was a massive car with lots of pistons. Uh, but you can't have too many pistons in an engine. There was an experimental 42-cylinder uh, plane engine that never flew. Uh, it produced a, so over 2,000 horsepower, but had other problems that basically meant it was unusable. So you can have too many pistons. And as it turns out, you can have too many Kafka petitions as well. So we did some benchmarking back in 2020, um, and we discovered that, uh, that too many petitions and the replication factor was, were the real culprits behind this Looking first at the orange line here, as the number of petitions were, was increased with the replication factor of only one, uh, it's a flat line, so the throughput is not dropping at that point. But when you have a replication factor greater than one, and three really is typical in a production Kafka cluster, you'll notice a significant drop in throughput, which is the blue line there, as the number of petitions increases. In fact, more than about 100 petitions and start running into real problems at that point. Uh, last year, we redid that benchmarking using a new, the new version of Kafka, which has something called K-Raft, which replaces the zookeeper mode. Uh, the first thing we found was the results overall were a lot better than the 22, sorry, 2020 results. So um, the, the latest version of Kafka will support at least 1,000 petitions for that much reduction in throughput on a fairly small Kafka cluster. The other thing, perhaps that's just interesting to note as well, is that the throughput of the zookeeper mode and the, the new K-Raft mode are identical for the data workload. It doesn't actually have any benefit in terms of the data throughput. What, what it does do is actually improve some of the metadata operation speed uh, The fourth and final fury is related to the single-threaded default consumers. Uh, what's new? Well, it's actually a new type of Sort of experimental, I guess, Kafka <coughs> consumer that's become available in the last 12 months or so. It's called the Kafka Parallel Consumer. And I guess in terms of my car metaphor, this is a bit like 
a different type of engine completely. Uh, interestingly enough, the first car to reach 100 kilometers an hour was a long time ago, and it was actually an electric car. And I believe this uh, Chinese supercar is currently one of the fastest cars in the world as well. It's four engines, and it's complete electric, of course. <coughs> so a bit of theory. Uh, Little's law um, may be familiar to you. It's a common uh, law in performance engineering. Basically, it says the concurrency of a system uh, is equal to the throughput times the time that each thing in the system spends in, in the system, basically. And you can rearrange that to compute throughput, which is concurrency divided by time. So this graph uh, shows that the concurrency in, in my um, system is basically the number of partitions, uh, which is also equal to the number of consumers as well. Um, using the default consumer, the throughput drops with increasing time because of the single-threaded nature of the consumers. And the only solution is to increase the number of partitions at that point. Um, so what basically happens then, if you have a particular target throughput, say a million transactions per second, which is easy to get with Kafka, um, you have to increase the total number of partitions that you've got with the increasing uh, latency spent in the consumers. So that you see here, for example, if the processing time is 100 milliseconds, which is quite long in Kafka terms, but it's, it's quite um, possible that you'd encounter that if, if the Kafka consumer is doing some extra work for example, talking to a database and getting the results back again, um, then you'll need about a million partitions to achieve, um, sorry, is that a million? 100,000, sorry, 100,000 partitions to achieve the 1 million TPS target throughput, which is a lot of partitions. So what can you do instead? Well, uh, order in Kafka is based on partitions only. Um, so how do you increase consumer currency and still maintain the ordering of events? Okay, so the Kafka parallel consumer is basically a multi-threaded consumer. Um, and there are multiple ordering options that it allows, which compared to the default Kafka consumer uh, only guarantees order within partitions. So you've got three options in this new consumer. You've got partition order, key order, or no order, unordered, <coughs> and the concurrency of the consumer increases um, to, towards the right as well. So you can achieve extra concurrency from one up to lots, which depends on a whole bunch of things like client resources and the size of the partition and key space as well. So there's a bit of tuning required. Um, key, though, has higher concurrency than the partition order uh, and is a reasonable compromise, and we'll see some results from here. Um, so the idea of the parallel consumer really is that the multi-threaded consumer gives you a lot more going on inside each, each consumer or inside each vehicle, so it's a bit like buses. And I have seen some uh, two-story buses, or double, double height buses in Beijing, so I, I believe they're used here as well. Um, so here's a theoretical improvement for each of the, the modes, uh, which shows that you can get, in theory at least, three orders of magnitude improvement in throughput compared to the default uh, Kafka consumer. So the throughput is increasing towards the right for the different options there. That's the theory anyway. Um, some early results we did, again from last year, uh, show that the practical results are pretty good. Perhaps not as good as the theory predicts, but um, not too bad nevertheless. So this is for a consumer response time of 10 milliseconds. Uh, just one consumer running, um, 10 petitions, and 100 keys. You can see that the, the throughput is uh, able to be increased significantly from the, the default case of 100 TPS up to sort of well over um, 10,000 TPS. So that's quite a significant improvement and all you're doing is using a different type of Kafka consumer at that point. So that's it. Um, here's the summary of the talk. Watch out for the Kafka Furies. The first one is having too many topics. Uh, and the reason that too many topics is bad normally is that you also have too many petitions to support that number of topics. So try and design your system to have the least number of topics that, that you can. The second problem is too many consumer groups. Um, in some situations, you might not be able to avoid that, but just keep in mind that the more consumer groups that you have, the more data is um, having to be uh, removed from the Kafka cluster to the consumer groups, and that actually is quite a resource intensive 
type of operation. So try and think of some of the design mechanism to get um, the data being broadcast to multiple consumers. The third fury is having slow consumers. Um, now, the problem with slow consumers is that you end up having too many petitions as well. So try and speed up your consumers as fast as possible. Uh, and the fourth theory is having insufficient or too many petitions. Um, so in using the default single-threaded consumer, you're basically stuck with having to increase the total number of consumers to increase the total throughput. Whereas with the new parallel uh, Kafka consumer, um, there are some other options which give you a lot more flexibility in terms of increasing the throughput through a limited number of consumers, which means you don't need as many petitions to support them. Well, so that is a few things to watch out for with Kafka. Um, oh, sorry, I just thought I'd conclude with this very strange transportation system, which I think sort of captures some of the essence of, of what I've been talking about. This is a very weird and wonderful busway, train bus system that we have in a city in Australia called Adelaide, called the O-Barn, and it's a bus that runs on a track, which I've never even heard of until I was doing a search for this type of transportation. Um, so, if you're running a bus on a track, what do you get? Well, you minimise the topics and petitions, uh, which is essentially having tracks. So buses are fast and self-driving and the track is quite clever. Um, they actually have a system of interchanges connected to this track system, which means you can sort of minimise the number of consumer groups um, that you have. So at the interchanges, the buses fan out on And then finally, having buses which have more than one passenger on them, uh, it's a bit like maximising the consumer concurrency. So you can have multiple passengers, which is um, which gives you better resource usage of the, the, on the client side of the system, basically. So yeah, it's a bit of a strange hybrid transportation system, but it does sort of correspond to what I've been explaining about how to optimise capital. Uh, with that, I think that's the end of my talk. So thank you very much. I hope that was interesting. <laughs> Um, 